Welcome to EliteGuitarist.com. My name is Ines Tomé. And today I will show you how to play Un Dia de Novembre by the Cuban composer Leo Brower. It's a very dark and sad, but also very lyrical piece and not the typical Leo Brower piece you might have heard before. It's originally written for a movie. I would like to thank GSI Guitar Salon International in Santa Monica for allowing me to use this beautiful Sakurai guitar from Japan and it's a 2017 model so it's brand new I might be the first person actually playing on it. So I hope you enjoy it throughout the video. Thank you. So now we are going to start uh, measure one. Actually the piece starts with a pickup so um, it's an A minor so that's the chord we need in measure one. Just our plain old A minor chord but we start with the pickup A B open B string and you can already use your third finger here for this A um, you don't have to you can you can switch but I like it um, then you can just put down the A minor chord in measure one so you pluck fifth and second string then the fourth string all A minor third and second string fourth string first string four again. That's the first measure. So already here, even though we're just starting to play the notes, really make sure that you bring out the melody. So the melody would be A, B, C, C, and then E, and so on. So let's do that just with, with all the notes. So really this thumb which is plucking the E, like the fourth string here, make sure it's really light so that you don't hit it with a lot of weight. The first thumb on the A string is our bass note. Um, since we are in A minor, we really need a, a big foundation here. So that one you should pluck a little louder. But then the E's are very soft. So the second measure is still A minor, but now we have a G in bass in the bass. Um, so make sure this G you play it with the fourth finger here. So you while you play the first measure, you can already get ready with your pinky here, and just put it on the third fret. And then again, that's our bass, so we want it to sound strong. A, B pick up. And then we move in measure three to this chord. So now we have an F in, ba in the bass. So we need to get our first finger from the C here, from our A minor chord. While you play A, B, see how my fingers move towards this F here and also the C on the second string. So let me do the transition from the second to the third measure just slowly. You're here in your A minor chord with the G in the bass with your pinky. And then while you play A and B, those are the last two notes of measure two, you move your fingers down to the second. Second finger goes on the first fret and the first finger down on this F here. Then an open D string, third, and then open E, and then pinky on D, and then open E. While you're here, you can already, towards the end of this measure, you can release your first finger like on the very last chord to get ready to the next one. But just do it very late so that this F really gets a good ring throughout the whole measure. So let me do the first three measures for you. So this is A, B, pick up, 
measure one A minor. And always bring out the melody. Now Pinky is ready, goes on the third fret. A, B, pick up again. Now you move and get ready with your first and second finger. Now open E. While I play the open E, I release my second finger so that my pinky gets um, has a chance to really get to the third fret here. Because if you leave your second finger down, it will be very hard for you to reach. So lift your second finger, not the first finger, that's the bass note we need up. Lift the second finger, pinky on D, and then open E. And now we move to a, essentially a C major chord, but with a G in the bass. So not this one, but this one. You can arpeggiate that if you want to, you don't have to. It's six, four, three, and two. And then the arpeggio which follows is third string, fourth string, third string. And then the second phrase would start. So that's the end of the first phrase. And notice how I play the the top of this arpeggio. The C is the loudest note. And then the three following notes are very soft because they are just part of the chord and not part of the melody. So I play now the first phrase for you. Measure one through four. Pinky gets ready. Lift your fingers and move one and second. Lift the second to get the pinky ready. first phrase. From here we go right into the second phrase. Um, we can, You can lift the, the G here, like the third finger, you can lift it at this point. So after you finish with that phrase, you leave one and two and lift the second. If you feel like it's not helping to lift it, you can um, leave it there. It doesn't sound bad if you leave it there. It's just the G will just ring a little longer, but there's G in this chord anyway. So this will, will sound good. Um, so the pickup to measure five would be uh, still the second finger on E, first finger on C, and you pluck four, three, and two. And then the pinky goes on the third fret. And now we actually move to a C major chord here. Let's measure five. So you, you don't need the second finger for the full chord because we don't pluck the fourth string. So just third and first finger. Then open G, open E. Now we move to the B here on the fifth string and the G on the first string. So two and four. Now measure six, we go back to A minor. So you can put down the full A minor chord already and then pluck the fifth and the second string first. Four string, three and two, four. And now my pinky is already um, up here because we need the G in the bass again. It's a little different. Um, it's like similar to what we played before, but just a little different transition. So I have this A minor chord in measure six and the last beat I have the pinky down on the G and pluck the high E string and then open G string and I move to F and A the first and second finger open D 
now it's an E minor chord essentially, so we don't need anything. Relax your hand here. That's a very nice spot to really relax your hand. So you plug the second and the sixth string. Open G and back to A minor. So you don't need to don't put the first finger down yet, but we will put it down eventually. So you already use third and second finger. And that's the last measure of the phrase. That's bar number eight. And here is where our repeat starts. And then we would repeat for measure one. So one more time slowly the second phrase. We we came from this C major chord with G in bass and measure four. You can lift this at the end when the pickup to when we are like on beat number three of measure four. And now we go to C major, plug the fifth string, third, second, and first. G, first string, third string. Now two and four on fifth and first string. And back to A minor. Get your pinky ready already here. G and E, open G. And now one and two on F and A. All open strings, sixth string and second string. Open G and back to A minor. And then pick up. Brings us right back to the beginning. So I will now repeat measure one through eight. That's the whole first section of the piece, the A section. And I will just talk you through when you lift the fingers and move to a different fret. So that you really learn how to anticipate each chord. Because the idea of this piece is that's very legato, it's very um, lyrical and it should be all connected. So you want to have a really smooth transition through the chords. You don't just want to play the A minor, A minor chord and then move to the next chord and there is a gap in between. So um, in order to reach that goal um, that you get like really smooth and have the fingers move without any gaps in between and get it all connected, you need to move the fingers already while you're in the first chord and lift certain fingers at a certain time. So let me play that one more time. A minor goes down. The pinky. Lift one and two, but not three and roll over. for the whole piece essentially is to be as connected as possible, really as legato and lyrical as you can be. And it's sometimes hard to do that with all the chord changes, but if you just do the chord changes very smart, um, then you can make it actually work that there are almost no gaps in between. In the A section that's working out pretty well if you just release certain fingers at a certain time and leave other fingers down. So a couple spots to think about is um, measure three. So you really want to not lift this F, like leave the F down as long as you can. But here to reach the D with your pinky, you need to release the second finger. So release the second finger and then you can 
move your elbow a little more inwards to really reach the pinky here and I'm just kind of like rolling over my first and third finger. So this is really the movement here in measure three. Um, if I try to do that without lifting my second finger, I have a really hard time getting my pinky here. If you have very long fingers, you might not have that problem. Um, but in any case, this is way easier for the hand and also better for the wrist because you don't have to extend your wrist as much. So you can just practice this little section in measure three a couple times to really get the movement smooth and so that it doesn't hurt you and you still reach everything. Let's now move on to the B section of the piece.